first of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity <coughs> to have the uh, to speak on this uh, interesting topic. We all know the uh, first landmark study by Vincenzo Mazzaferro, which clearly showed us that liver transplantation is an acceptable therapeutic option uh, for patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. And over the years, the several uh, proposals occurred, expanding those criteria into more numerous uh, and larger lesions. But we all intuitively know that by uh, setting the limits farther, uh, the price that is going uh, to be paid is higher and this price is uh, going to be paid by the patients uh, and not us. And this was greatly visualized uh, by the Metro Ticket uh, concept, also by the Vincenzo Mazzaferro group. Uh, and over this diagram, we can clearly show that by accepting uh, for transplantation patients with higher number or larger lesions, the uh, chance for successful transplantation gradually drops. But this interesting concept gave us the flexibility uh, over the Milan criteria in selection of patients for liver transplantation. Uh, and in fact, patients who did not fulfill the Milan criteria but fulfilled the novel prognosis uh, called the up to seven uh, criteria did great after uh, transplantation, similar to patients uh, fulfilling Milan criteria. But this was not the case for patients with uh, microvascular uh, invasion, uh, which obviously cannot be assessed prior to uh, liver transplantation. We all know that uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is a very heterogeneous uh, disease and not always the size uh, or the number of lesions is the determining uh, factor for uh, determination of patients' prognosis after the transplantation. So uh, it would be best if we had a simple measure uh, to know tumor uh, biology. And in fact, I think that we do have such a measure and by inputting uh, a, a term of liver transplantation, hepatocellular carcinoma with alpha fetoprotein, we get uh, over 1,300 1, results of, uh, on PubMed uh, and it seems that we've reached a peak and uh, which is very important. Majority of these studies confirm the independent and major role of uh, alpha fetoprotein in selection of patients uh, for liver transplantation. This was another landmark uh, study uh, performed by Christian uh, Tozo, uh, the presence uh, that is present on uh, today's uh, meeting, which shows, showed us an interesting concept of to limit selection of patients uh, for liver transplantation, patients with either low, uh, with both low tumor burden and uh, relatively low alpha fetoprotein concentration defined as under 400 nanograms per, per milliliter did acceptably well after uh, liver uh, transplantation. And this study was prospectively uh, validated. Uh, and uh, the results clearly showed us the feasibility of using such criteria uh, in the uh, transplant setting. Uh, we uh, had an, another concept which we published in Annals of uh, Surgical Oncology. Uh, is by uh, that concept was uh, on leaving uh, or uh, leaving the Milan criteria as the basis for selection of patients and expanding uh, the selection limits uh, by. Uh, the uh, expanded criteria, the UCSF or the up to seven criteria, but for the extended limits, uh, we apply the cutoff for alpha fetoprotein concentration under 100 nanograms per milliliter, and that gave us a null risk of uh, recurrence. Uh, this uh, IFP model published recently uh, or uh, several years ago uh, by uh, Duvo et al. Uh, was a very or another interesting concept of uh, incorporating uh, a biological surrogate defined as uh, alpha fetoprotein concentration into the selection criteria. We see this uh, simplified version of the AFP model, uh, which uh, allowed for risk stratification before liver transplantation and the limit of two points uh, selected well patients at low risk of post-transplant uh, tumor uh, recurrence. And importantly, it did, uh, what mattered uh, was the 
last AFP model score before transplantation and not the initial one, so uh, that pointed towards the benefits of pre-transplant treatment and putting patients from high risk into uh, low risk uh, groups, so patients did um, almost the same uh, as patients initially being in the low risk according to the AFP model. And this AFP model was uh, validated in numerous studies in patients with viral hepatitis in cohorts from Latin America and from uh, Asian uh, countries, with, uh, which showed that patients with low AFP model score uh, uh, exhibited acceptable uh, post-transplant outcomes. Uh, but importantly, uh, we are also afraid about potential selection bias in uh, such studies and uh, the proportion of patients uh, in that validation studies uh, ranged from uh, 25% uh, to 38%. Uh, I will come back to this uh, later. Uh, as the metro ticket concept was very interest, interesting uh, at the days that it was uh, invented, uh, it seemed that with the increasing number of uh, data uh, on the necessity to incorporate tumor biology in selection criteria, the metro ticket needed a little refurbishment, and this was done in the metro ticket 2.0 uh, study, uh, in which uh, the combined number of uh, the combined uh, tumor number and size of the largest uh, model and AFP concentration was used to define post-transplant risk uh, of recurrence and patients uh, eligible for transplantation uh, or the limit for uh, alpha fetoprotein concentration making patients eligible for transplantation differed uh, on the basis of uh, the, the initial tumor burden. Uh, and again, uh, patients that uh, fulfilled uh, those uh, limits uh, did very well after uh, the transplantation in the uh, validation set. Uh, we were afraid that uh, switching between different limits for alpha fetoprotein concentration, uh, depending on the uh, tumor burden, might be a little, uh, maybe. Uh, not uh, precise enough for the termination of, um, of the risk of tumor recurrence after transplantation. Uh, and in this paper from Honors of Surgery that we published in 2020, uh, we showed that in fact the cumulative outcomes of those patients are really good. But again, when you use Milan criteria for patients within the Metro to Ticket 2.0 criteria, uh, those that fall out of the Milan criteria uh, have approximately twofold higher uh, risk of uh, recurrence after the transplantation. Uh, and uh, also, there were numerous works uh, looking uh, at the dynamic values of alpha fetoprotein concentration chain, uh, before liver transplantation. Some authors defined progressive uh, alpha fetoprotein slopes at 0 0.1 micrograms per day, some per, uh, as per 15 uh, nanograms per milliliter uh, per day, but uh, the others and our uh, groups and uh, showed that uh, what matters really is the last alpha fetoprotein concentration before transplantation and patients uh, can transit from high risk to low risk groups or vice versa uh, over the pre-transplant period. And this was uh, another uh, proposal for selection of patients for liver transplantation uh, made by groups from New York and uh, California uh, that was called New York California uh, SCORE. Uh, that mixed the uh, tumor burden defined by tumor size and tumor number as diagnosis with different, very different cutoffs uh, for uh, alpha fetoprotein concentration defined as uh, patients were defined as responders or non responders, numerous uh, cutoffs, quite of complex score. And the authors showed us on the uh, left that this score does quite well in uh, prognostic uh, stratification of patients. Uh, undergoing liver transplantation for HCC, but uh, the same authors also showed us the, uh, the graph on the right hand, uh, which is simple alpha fetoprotein concentration before liver transplantation. And uh, if I had to uh, choose the model uh, looking at those two pictures, I would say that uh, it seems that simple alpha fetoprotein uh, concentration before liver transplantation does uh, better than the New York, California uh, score, even looking at the, uh, at the numbers of patients uh, using only 
alpha fetoprotein concentration, we have approximately 1,300 patients using alpha fetoprotein only and 1,000 patients using a, uh, this quite um, complex uh, New York, California uh, score. Uh, another, uh, another feature that can be taken as a surrogate for uh, tumor biology in patients uh, undergoing liver transplantation for HCC is response to new adjuvant uh, treatment. And in this paper from Annals of Surgery, it was uh, even defined, uh, or complete pathologic response was even defined uh, as a definition for cancer cure uh, after liver transplantation. And it was based on almost 100% uh, disease-specific survival after five years uh, since uh, transplantation. However, uh, in our study in which we compared uh, well-matched patients with, uh, with complete pathological response to those untreated, uh, it uh, seemed that uh, those patients do uh, exactly the same as patients initially at low risk and the uh, achievement of complete pathological response did not change much in terms of uh, prognostic stratification. And what we observed was, uh, and that was quite unexpected uh, for us, that uh, patients uh, within uh, especially uh, within the Milan criteria with low AFP models, so in, uh, basically low-risk patients that undergo pre-transplant neoadjuvant treatment and fail to uh, achieve uh, complete pathological response, and that is the true for vast majority, uh, majority of patients. Those patients are, uh, in fact, at increased risk of uh, tumor uh, recurrence after liver transplantation, and this was quite well also demonstrated in a study by Kang et al, which uh, compared also patients uh, not, uh, uh, or patients uh, achieving complete pathological response to patients untreated uh, either before liver resection or liver transplantation, but initially at low risk of tumor uh, recurrence. And in fact, patients with complete pathological response uh, had increased risk of tumor recurrence both after resection and after transplantation as compared to low risk uh, patients uh, untreated uh, preoperatively. Uh, and this, in this another uh, study, a big study from US multicenter HCC transplant consortium, uh, not receiving complete pathological response after neoadjuvant treatment was also found as an independent predictor of uh, post-transplant uh, recurrence. So the question is, can unsuccessful pre-transplant therapy be even harmful uh, to patients undergoing uh, liver transplantation? And in part, this is answered by this uh, nice study from 2017 published in June now of the American College uh, of Surgeons, which showed uh, the same, uh, that is an in remarkably increased risk of tumor recurrence in patients treated preoperatively, but not reaching complete pathological uh, response. And uh, the uh, very interesting observation is that uh, patients uh, that have all, only partial necrosis uh, are much more prone to lymphatic metastasis after uh, liver uh, transplantation. And uh, looking beyond that uh, result, it seemed that uh, reaching only partial response uh, to therapy increases uh, a number of cytokines, uh, increases the density of the receptors and increases uh, the number of lymphatic uh, vessels uh, in the uh, peritumoral tissue, which uh, may increase the risk of lymphatic metastasis, as was uh, found by the authors. Uh, but the question is also, can we interfere with the uh, tumor uh, biology? We and the other groups um, found that uh, ischemia reperfusion injury uh, is uh, a significant factor um, increasing the risk of uh, HCC recurrence after the transplantation. And we obviously have a, a very uh, or a currently developed method of uh, lowering the ischemia reperfusion injury with hypothermic oxygenated uh, machine perfusion, uh, which was shown by the uh, group of Professor uh, Klavian uh, that even uh, with using uh, the hope for patients undergoing liver transplantation for HCC, uh, despite that uh, the donors were after cardiac death, 
the patients uh, had remarkably lowered risk of recurrence after the uh, transplantation in the lo long term compared to uh, unperfused uh, DBD uh, donors. Thank you for your attention. So, thank you very much. A question? Please. Treatment of um, um, HCC. Uh, is it uh, uh, actually uh, all, me all methods used for treatment are um, um, giving worse results after transplantation? Excuse me, can you repeat the question? Uh, if you use uh, uh, thermal ablation, Yes. or a section, does it uh, uh, influence the, the outcome in the same way in terms of worse results after uh, transplantation in the patients uh, within this uh, criteria, uh, that uh, Warsaw criteria? Well, the, 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 uh, definitely not. The uh, liver resection is quite different from both thermal ablation and uh, taste therapies. Uh, mm -hmm. There are data that uh, both taste and uh, thermal or RFI are uh, similar uh, in new adjuvant treatment prior to liver transplantation, but hepatic resection uh, uh, is somewhat different because first it gives us uh, more insight in, uh, in the preoperative period uh, into tumor biology. We have the pathological report. We know whether there is microvascular invasion. There were even protocols developed that uh, uh, based selection uh, uh, on the results of histopathological uh, examination in patients undergoing uh, resection uh, and uh, obviously, due to uh, the inadequate number of uh, donors, we have to use uh, also uh, liver resection despite higher risk of recurrence in patients fulfilling the criteria when there are resectable uh, lesions. But we also know that sometimes, unfortunately, the recurrence is beyond the, any acceptable limits for liver transplantation, and liver resection makes uh, the operation, the, the transplant operation, harder. So, uh, yes, we should use liver resection prior to. Uh, uh, transplantation, but uh, with the awareness that it may increase the risk of uh, recurrence. Uh, but we also have the option of uh, transplanting those patients in, uh, when uh, recurrence within the acceptable limits occurs. Does it refer also to the patient with uh, cirrhosis and without cirrhosis? Well, I was focused on cirrhosis. We have um, much less data uh, in patients without, uh, without cirrhosis. So uh, selection of patients with HCC in non-cirrhotic livers uh, seems to be more individual. We don't have so robust uh, data or selection criteria for those patients. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Thank you.